Good evening, everyone. A change to the programme announced. But I wanted to start off this service by saying that before we celebrate the Saviour's birth, we all wish to say happy birthday to Jenny, who is leading our service this evening. So happy birthday, Jenny. We hope you've had a really lovely day. Thank you. I have. <laughs> And now let us bow our heads for a period of silence to allow us to prepare ourselves to celebrate the birth of Jesus, the Christ child. Welcome to Christ the King Midnight in Bethlehem Christmas Communion Service. We have Reverend Ian Bentley preaching for us and also leading us in Holy Communion. Unfortunately, not in person, but he's recorded it for us. And with the wonders of technology, we can celebrate together wherever we are. Ian and Ruth wish you all a happy Christmas. And if you wish to take part in the Eucharist, please have a small amount of bread and wine which must be consumed before the end of the service. I take this opportunity to wish you all a happy Christmas. And now let's begin the celebrations by singing, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. And of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Reveal among us the light of your presence. 
that we may be hold your, your power and glory. Over to Jane. We now light our final Advent candle, the Christ candle. The Christ candle reminds us that Jesus is the spotless Lamb of God, sinless and pure. His birth was for the, his death and his death was for our birth. Let us pray. Father, bless this candle, that its light may shine in our hearts and fill us with purity and love as we greet you at your birth. Amen. Amen. Let us join in the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear these commandments which God has given to his people and examine your hearts. I am the Lord your God, and you shall have no other gods but me. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Amen. Lord, Lord have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. God is the spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not dishonour the name of the Lord your God. You shall worship him with awe and reverence. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Christ is risen from the dead. Set your mind on things that are above and not on things on the earth. Amen. Lord, Lord have mercy. Honour your father and mother. Live as servants of God. Let us work for God of all, especially members of the household of faith. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. mercy. You shall not commit murder. Live peaceably with all. Overcome evil with good. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, Lord have mercy. You shall not steal. Be honest in all that you do and care for those in need. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Let everyone speak the truth. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything which belongs to your neighbour. Remember the words of Jesus Christ. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Love your neighbour as yourself. Love the fulfilling of the law. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Together. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour. In what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. 
for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal God, in the stillness of this night, you sent your almighty word to pierce the world's darkness with the light of salvation. Give to the earth the peace that we long for, and fill our hearts with the joy of heaven through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And now we'll join together to sing Infant Holy, Infant Lowly. Mm -hmm. Alleluia, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. 
you will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Friends, good evening. It's great to be able to join you on this uh, Christmas Eve. Uh, sorry I'm not there to be with you live, but actually this Christmas Eve here in uh, UK, I'm taking two services in different villages, and then tomorrow morning, God willing, I'll be leading our main service here in St David's, Morton in Marsh. So I'm sure you'll understand why I can't be with you alive on Zoom. On the 11th of December, Sunday the 11th of December, here in Morton in Marsh, we held an open air carol service. Unfortunately, during the day, snow had fallen snow on snow. It was deep and crisp and even, and yet it was great. It was great to be singing carols outside, even for me, who the previous day had been in Egypt. So you can imagine uh, the temperature change was startling. But out there in the cold, with the snow underfoot, the canopy over of stars overhead, it was awesome. Because, you know, it reminded me that so much of that first Christmas was outside, wasn't it? There were the wise men who looked up into the sky and were following a star. There were the shepherds, we read about living out in the fields. Well, I suppose that's the best place if you want to look after uh, sheep. And I suppose the sheep were okay because they were probably contented there watching YouTube. But it was great. It was great to be outdoors. And despite the weather, we had quite a crowd, which again was good. Because Christmas is about people, isn't it? One of the highlights of Christmas is people to come in together be it in our churches, in our homes, or many of the other places where we go. At Christmas, people get together, sometimes from different parts of the world. And all over the world, this Christmas time, people will celebrate Christmas. Christmas is for all people, no matter what their race, no matter what their background. Now I'm sure for all of us, we're looking forward to Christmas and looking forward to seeing people uh, at Christmas. But then there's so much else that we look forward to at Christmas. Are you excited? I'm excited. I'm excited about Christmas. It's a time of fun, of parties, of food, of presents, family, friends. It is a time of great joy. I hope you're excited. I hope you're looking forward because Christmas is a time of great joy. And we need that, don't we? Because it has been a tough uh, year. It's been a tough year in general with the continuation of COVID, the war in Ukraine, the death of the Queen. But then for you, it may have been a tough year specifically. As you look back on the year, perhaps there are points of sadness rather than of joy. And it reminds us that the world in which we live so often is dark and we need good news. And that's what Christmas is, isn't it? Christmas is good news and it brings us joy now and hope for the future. Christmas is for all people. It's a time of great joy and it really is good news. And that 
was what the angels said to the shepherd. Except I've got all the right words, but not necessarily in the right order. There were these shepherds outside in the fields near Bethlehem when that angel, a messenger from God, appeared to them and said this, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Did you catch that? Good news, great joy for all the people. And Christmas is about the good news of God becoming man and being born in the town of Bethlehem. Christmas is good news, not because of parties, pies, presents, but because of a person. Jesus is the good news of Christmas. And, and not just because he was born in a stable, but because of who he is and because of why he came. That's what the angel went on to spell out, isn't it? Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. In Bethlehem had been born a baby. But a baby whom God proclaimed through that messenger would be the saviour of the world. Now, I wonder what the shepherds made of that. We read that the shepherds went down to Bethlehem, they checked out the baby, but what did they make of that idea of this baby being their saviour? And on this Christmas Eve, I wonder, what do you make of it? As you sit in your home or wherever you are, you may be aware of many things you need, but perhaps a saviour is not top of the list. Perhaps you're thinking, well, what we really need is a scientist who can sort out climate change, or an economist who can help with the cost of living crisis uh, and, and poverty in the world. Friends, these are real needs, and God is more aware of them than we are. But God knew what our greatest need was, and he knew that our greatest need is forgiveness. And that's why he sent a saviour. God saw humanity, the humanity he had created, that was cut off from him by our rejection of him, our rebellion against him. Not able to be restored by our own efforts. God knew our greatest need was to come back to him, to be restored in our relationship to him. So, out of love, he sent his son Jesus, and he sent him to become a substitute for you and I on the cross. Jesus took the punishment that we deserved so we might know the forgiveness of God that we didn't deserve, and through that be reunited to our Heavenly Father as his loved children. That's what the angel said, meant when he said, good news, because the child was born to save. Now I'm looking forward to tomorrow, to Christmas Day. Our son has come back from the United States and tomorrow, uh, God willing, all of us are going up to Yorkshire to be together with our daughter and our family. All people. I'm looking forward to seeing the joy on the grandchildren's faces at different times at the Christmas meal, when they open presents, as we play games together. It'll be great joy. I'm looking forward to hearing the news of all that they've been doing. Good news. All people. Great joy. Good news. But you know, most of all, I'm looking forward to celebrating the one who is my, the birth of the one who is my saviour. And I hope is your saviour as well. That's what my Christmas looks like. What does yours look like? I hope that yours too will be shared with, with people. I hope it'll be full of joy. I hope you'll be more, you'll embrace the good news that today in the town of David, a saviour has been born for you. Let me pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you that through that good news of a saviour, Christmas and your grace is open to all people so that we might know the joy of being your children. And may that be true in our hearts and our lives this Christmas and into the year that lies ahead. And this we ask for Jesus' sake. Amen. Let us join together in the Nicene Creed. 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in the cordials of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will he come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism that the gifts of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we go to Marina for the intercessions. <laughs> Let us pray on this holy night. Lord, on this holy night, we pause to prepare our hearts for a most beautiful celebration, your birth and coming to earth as our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Clear our minds so we can focus on you and the joy you bring to us through your gift of salvation. May the same thrill and anticipation that filled Mary thrill us and draw us closer to you. May our hearts cry out, Alleluia, with the host of angels who first delivered the good news of great joy to those humble, awestruck shepherds that night so long ago. Help us remember and reflect on the awesome prophecies foretelling your birth since the beginning of time. Give us eyes of faith to see on this side of the cross what prophets chose to believe through promises and visions. Emmanuel, God with us, Prince of Peace, the Son of God, Messiah. May all that you are saturate our senses and fill our hearts with both gratitude and worship as we bow this evening before you and offer our prayer to you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, on this holy night, cleanse us of all our sin and anything that might hinder our celebration of your birth. We surrender all so that we can receive your all this holy night. We want to prepare our hearts for you as you are preparing a place for us to join you one day. May our every thought, every desire, every word, and every gift-giving action this holy night usher us into that place where you will meet us as we are. May the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you and bring you the glory and honour you deserve. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, not everyone feels joyful at this season. Some have lost loved ones. Some are sick and in need of your healing. Some are lonely and in need of friendship. May the joy of your birth and the good news of your coming to earth as a saviour of the world cushion every sadness this holy night. We pray for those who are displaced, living in war zones, the hungry, the persecuted, those without hope. Remind them all, Lord, that you are the great comforter and counsellor and that you never leave us or forsake us. You are always with us 
holding our hearts tenderly in your hands. Let them know they're not forgotten. On this night of miracles, speak peace to those who need it most. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Just as the three Magi brought their offerings in celebration of your birth, we bring you our gifts too. We bring our obedience and devotion to you, the quieting of our hearts and spirits, and the joyful overflow of our worship and adoration. On this holy night, as we receive and celebrate your great gift to us this Christmas, we give you thanks and we praise your holy name. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the tender mercy of our God, the day springing from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace, everyone. Peace, 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 to everybody. Jenny, you're muted. Now let us join together to sing Good Christian Men Rejoice. Mm -hmm. scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside and now reunited on this table in bread and wine so lord may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom amen Friends, I hope you have um, bread and wine or wafer and something anyway to share in communion uh, in just a few moments. We come to the Eucharistic prayer in our service orders and let me lead us in our communion prayers. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. 
It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. He is the one foretold by all the prophets, whom the Virgin Mother bore with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist was his herald and made him known when at last he came. In his love, Christ fills us with joy as we prepare to celebrate his birth, so that when he comes again, he may find us watching in prayer, our hearts filled with wonder and praise. And so, with the angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. We say together, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life, the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Together, dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms. Bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And let us pray for the coming of God's kingdom in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses that we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread, and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. We say together the endless day, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, Grant us peace. And the next prayer we say together. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation. 
and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. So friends, draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. So friends, take and eat the body of Christ in remembrance that he died for you. And drink his blood in remembrance. His blood was shed for your salvation. Amen. We now are going to pray the prayer after communion. So we say together, Generous God, you have fed us at your heavenly table. Set us on fire with your spirit, that when Christ comes again, we may shine like lights before his faith, who with you and the spirit lives forever. Amen. Friends, bless you. Great to share in communion with you. Remember that the 1st of January is on Zoom as well. And now we're going to join together to sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
Lord says, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Come Lord Jesus. Jesus. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. Amen.